Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. I certainly hope that you have time to stay with us for the next few minutes, grab a cup of tea, come right on in. And uh, perhaps this is the first time you've seen the program, you're doing a little channel surfing, and it's called Home Keepers. And I want you to know you are so welcome, you come right on in. And if you're one of our regular viewers, I hope you know how much we love and appreciate you. And we've got a great program for you today. Give you full disclosure, my, my guest is already on the set, and he's a friend of many, many years, Dr. Lonnie Rex. Thank, Thank you. you for coming Thank to you. Home Keepers. And we're going to discuss a book that is hot off the press that he has written about his life. And I actually make a concerted effort to not use the word amazing because it is so overused and it is such a kind of a specific word that uh, you would target in very rare, rare situations, but it absolutely fits his life. I think that uh, you'll be riveted at, at his story and we will go over it as best we can. And I'm going to join Stephanie in the kitchen. We're going to make a cinnamon biscuit roll. It's smelling good in here. And it's kind of a variation of things that we've done before. But before I join her, I want to offer you the book Freedom from Financial Fear. And it's by D. James Kennedy. And uh, perhaps I admired him more than most uh, television preachers and so forth. I love that man. And so fortunate to still have some of his books. And as we begin a new year, a lot of people are really intent on getting their finances in order. And this is Freedom from Financial Fear. And it's yours if you'll write to me. Uh, the address is on your screen and the best gift you can give. I would really appreciate hearing from you and you help us keep the program on the air. And at the same time, we're giving you a great treasure. So write to me at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And uh, we will get it out to you. And so appreciate uh, your support of this ministry. And here's my good friend, Sister Stephanie. Yes, and as we're making this program, mm -hmm. Uh, you just got back from Christmas vacation. I am happy to be back. And the reason I say that is because you might see this program in June or mm -hmm. July because it's been called reruns. Reruns, yes. And I don't apologize because at this very moment, I Love Lucy is playing somewhere. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> True story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So how was it? Oh, it was fabulous. It was nice to have a break, and it's nice to come back. She said she wasn't even going to get out of her pajamas. So. My, uh, there were a lot of days I didn't get out of my pajamas. I just well. texted my husband. I said, where am I? Why are all these people asking me questions? Where are my pajamas? <laughs> Well, what are we making here today, girl? We're going to make a biscuit cinnamon roll. It's kind of like the monkey bread we've made in the past. It's mm -hmm. very similar, but it's always nice to have a, re, you know, a, re, a refreshment mm -hmm. of easy, simple There's recipes. There's nothing for me to do. Is there yeah, you can spray, spray the pan. All right. I have three t um, tablespoons of butter that we've melted down, and I have a half a cup of um, syrup. You can use any syrup that you like. I'm the only one allowed to do this because yes, this takes a so lot of talent. very good at it. I'm actually, I'll let you stir this up, actually. Okay. So this is just a half a cup of syrup, any syrup you like want. Like your pancake, mm -hmm. waffle. And then three tablespoons of melted butter. You can stir that mm -hmm. up. And then I have a third of a cup of brown sugar. And so this is good for you, obviously. Uh-huh. Yeah. We would uh, say that you usually put this in a bunk pan, which mm -hmm. we did the first mm -hmm. one. But we're doing it in a, a little a different loaf. one to give mm -hmm. you a little bit more little depth, variation. probably. Sure. And then I have a half a teaspoon of cinnamon I'm going to put in here. And I have some, what's these, walnuts you bought? I remember one time we did a show and we couldn't make this pop. And when we did, it oh exploded. my. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a bomb going off. Yeah, so we have two cans of biscuits here. These are the little ones. Mm -hmm. but you can use the big graham biscuits and you'd have a great big fluffy but would there you have to kind of uh, modify? What no, you put no, in? because in that bump, it'll it would just it would just uh, puff up nicely. All right. So you're just going to take half of your butter and mm -hmm. syrup mixture. You know these are so special when you have company or something. Um, you could even put them together the night before, put them in the fridge. And mm -hmm. I like them the best. These are the biscuits, but I like them the best when you get those frozen. Yeast rolls yes, and let them and rise. Yes, and they really I, fluff up. I yes. kind of prefer that. And but. then I put half of the brown sugar and nuts and cinnamon, and I'm just going to layer the biscuits. Mm -hmm. Do like a. There we go. And then I'm just going to pour the other half of the butter and um, 
syrup. That's and a little too hot. And the other half of the nuts. And then you just bake it at what? 375, 375 for about 20, uh -huh. 25 minutes. Do you think I Are can Are you going to do it? I would rather you would do okay. it. Okay. Okay, and then you you just layer this. Yeah. Here, do those. Okay. Mm -hmm. That way, if she makes a mess, then it's, it's all not my me. fault. Right. She, there's just something she does so well. Well, Most let's not say that. It's not out yet. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're supposed to start out. out. Oh, I do so oh my. well. <laughs> it's the span, I'm telling you. Oh, they're supposed to just... Oh, it's just supposed to Oh, it's sure up. beautiful, though. It's coming out in pieces, but... That's okay. It's still pretty it'll and taste gooey. Good. Sorry. I okay, don't know. see, you speak highly of me, and then what happens? Well, I wonder I if they here. should come out... <laughs> Get a close up of that. Oh my. There's something for the Jolly Reel for the Spray Christmas program. Spray the pan better than I did. Uh huh. Yeah. But you it's can still tell they're be delicious. You can tell they're beautiful. Okay, then this goes over this. Yep. All right. I would say, though, you flip those out as soon as they come out of the oven. That probably would have been better because yeah. it had time to get sticky. Let me yeah. scrape the bowl here. I'll just take. You take a little bite. Mmm. Get you a hot That's cup of delicious, isn't it? Yeah, you get a hot cup of tea and you're set. Hey, if you want this recipe, that information's coming up on your screen. And probably you can do a better job than we did getting it out of the pan. Probably. But you're <laughs> you're welcome to it. And you can see how easy it is and how good it tastes. Uh, just take advantage of that. And stay, I want you to meet Lonnie Rex. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Lonnie, I was trying to think the first time we met, I think it was right here at the Christian Television Network, at maybe 20, 25 years ago. At least 25 for a telethon. Yeah, and um, I I kept wondering, you know, when you were a little boy, preacher's boy, right? Preacher PK, son, PK. Go to the altar like all of we preacher's kids and dedicate our life to the Lord and say, what do you want me to do? And um, I would hear my father preach on the feeding the 5,000, the little boy giving the, the fish and the loaves. I always wanted to be that little boy. You are that little boy. And you know, in Oklahoma, we didn't have the loaves and the fishes. <laughs> fishes. You know. So I'd wonder, well, Mom would fix me some cornbread and, I w I, and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I was trying, but I really figured out it's you give what you have. And Jesus could multiply the and peanut Jesus butter sandwiches if he right, needed to. Peanut butter sandwiches. Yeah. Uh, I've always wanted to be that little boy. Well, you know, I can't put a title on you. Uh, you're definitely in the ministry, there's no doubt. You're not a pastor, you're not evangelist, you're not a professor in a Bible college. Do you have a name for yourself? Lonnie. Lonnie. <laughs> I love your, I don't know if this is what you live by, but you say, I don't ask God for money, I ask him for ideas and he will fund the ideas. If he gives me the idea, it's up to him to fund it. And that is so concise. That is exactly uh, what you've done. The name of your book is My Amazing Adventures with God, From Polio and Paralysis to Walking with the Pope. Yep. Uh, I just wonder if there's a lot of younger people in our audience who don't even know what polio is. Well, I, I hope a lot of them don't. Right. But it was an epidemic back in mm -hmm. 1937 when I had polio, pa paralyzed, and uh, I had a great miracle happen. Uh, in, in the two years, this leg didn't grow. So even today, it's two inches shorter than the other. And then I was in the crippled children's hospital, and I was a guinea pig, and a doctor, a special doctor from New York came down, and he told me he was going to transplant a dog muscle in my leg. 
a dog muscle. Dog, so they cut it open and took all of the dead muscles out and transplanted the live muscles. He didn't put a dog muscle in. Oh. He just, as a kid, told me that. Oh. And, but I don't. I believed you. <laughs> <laughs> My wife did too. I told her that and I got married. And, <laughs> and, and I don't have any muscle in this leg to push my foot down. I don't have any muscles to pull it up. And they block the ankle. So I kind of use this leg as a peg leg. But uh, I still going. You it still go me. and you've been everywhere. Uh, one more thing about that. If the younger people are, uh, there's vaccines that, pre but it was an epidemic. That was a salt vaccine now that keeps it because my daddy is a preacher and I don't remember this at all but he has told me how they you were quarantined they couldn't have church services nope. or anything it was that Close bad the swimming pool devastating I went to sing for a girl once in an iron lung and yes. trying to cheer her up I broke down and cried it yes. was bad okay you uh, have founded the David Livingston Foundation which is a huge uh, missionary endeavor but here's 25 orphanages not a missionary organization because we weren't missionaries. Mm -hmm. We were humanitarians and we took care of, I'll tell you why I started it. I was in India with T.L. Osborne mm -hmm. at a crusade. I was building the platform and running the lights and, and getting ready for the crusade. And this young lady came up to me and had a little baby and she put it in my arms. And, and I thought she wanted me to bless it. So I blessed it and prayed for it and then tried to give it back to her and she had her arms behind her. Mm. And the interpreter came up and said, she wants you to have the baby. And she pulled her Whoa. little sorry back. She said, I have no milk. I have no money. Baby oh dying. God. You take baby to the United States. You raise baby. Mm. I'm holding it. That's a mother. I just start crying. Okay. What do you do? Yeah. Well, I, I finally knew that the t Indian government wouldn't let me do that. So mm -hmm. I talked to her in taking the baby back. The lady helped me, and I had some money in my pocket. And I said, you take this money, and you go buy this baby some mm -hmm. milk. But when she walked away, I said, mm -hmm. I'll never turn another baby away. Mm. And we built over 25 orphanages around the world and that would be a lifetime job except you've done a whole lot more than that i want to go over some of the people that you've rubbed shoulders with right. you know okay president truman yes eisenhower yes tell me about churchill churchill i love churchill i love churchill i wish we had more leaders like him I tell you when i met him washington dc in 1952 i moved to washington dc in the in uh, 51 to attend uh, George Washington University to get my master's degree. And uh, we lived on the same street that the British Embassy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I passed it every morning going to work. I noticed in the paper that morning that Winston Churchill was in town. It's all I knew. <coughs> but as I'm driving down Massachusetts Avenue, I noticed that all of the cameras and, and, and press was over at the right gate. Mm -hmm. Well, the British Embassy has bl gates about a block apart. Well, the British go in the left gate. They don't go in the right gate. You know, they drive their cars on the right. rest of the road. <laughs> and so I thought that was funny. And I just turned around the corner and walked around. I was the only one at the left gate. And about that time, Anthony Eden, their minister of state, uh -huh. and Winston Churchill turned right in front of him, and I just walked with the car <laughs> up to the chancery, and I was standing at the door when Churchill got out, and he thought I was the receiver, <laughs> and we just had a good talk and, and about my children and what I was doing there and what all was going on, and, and finally Anthony Eden hollering, come on, Winston, let's mm -hmm. go. So finally he went in, and I'm limousine, the limousines left, and I'm standing out there and I thought, I'm gonna get shot. <laughs> so I walked around, go back down the road I came up and all of the press came over to this gate. 
I thought, well, how am I going to get through? But by the time I got there, they all opened, never said a word. I walked through, I walked down the sidewalk, and a man came up, or a person came up behind, whispered, your limp doesn't fool us. We know you're with Scotland Yard. <laughs> that's, oh, that's a great story. Oh my goodness. That's in the new book with, of the 50 personages of the world that have met when, where, and how. <laughs> All right, but we're talking about this book today. Yes. It's called uh, My Amazing Adventures with God. And uh, by my guest, this is really hot off the press. We're going to put the website up. We're going to leave it up the rest of the program. And uh, they can get this where? On Amazon and everything else? Our, or just write this program. Uh, we'll all right. Okay, let's see. Uh, also, uh, President Carter. Yes. Uh, Peter Marshall. I've, I've read about everything that... Peter Marshall uh, was the pastor there and the chaplain mm -hmm. of the Senate when mm -hmm. we lived in Washington, uh -huh. D.C., and pastor of the Presbyterian Church there. Some of his sermons are so relevant today yes, that yes. it's just, let's see, uh, Norman Vincent Peale. Norman Vincent Peale was pastor of the Collegiate Church mm -hmm. in New York City. And Betty and I <coughs> get on the train and go up and be at his church. And first Sunday I was there, you had to stand in line uh, to get in. Mm -hmm. You had to wait till the first service over. As they went out one door, the next service came in the other door and we, we were in the balcony then it was packed and Winston uh, Norman, Vincent. Norman Fitt and Winston Field came out and sat down in his chair looked over at the program went to sleep <laughs> closed his eyes well I, I know what maybe he was praying was, I thought maybe he was praying the choir sung announcements made I really thought the went to sleep finally I looked on the program and it came time for Winston, for, for Norman. Mm -hmm. He was still sitting there asleep. Finally, he hit the chair, jumped up, hit that sermon, oh, man. captivated. Yeah, he was. Uh, he waited till everybody was. Everything was done. Expecting uh -huh. him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I heard him speak uh, when I was much, much younger. Hey, you were uh, good friends working with Oral Roberts almost from the beginning, is from, that right? Yes. We, our families were very close. In fact, my father built a church at Enid, Oklahoma, and Oral Roberts followed him. And uh, so we were with him since the beginning of the time. And I, uh, Oral asked me to come when he started filming in, for television. And uh, first that day was I was there, he said, I'm embarrassed. I'm not on Tulsa television. They won't take a healing program. They won't take a right mm -hmm. hand. And he said, get me on my hometown. Well, I said, I was in my 20s, brash, been to Washington, D.C., did everything. So I said, Oral, I'll do that today. What else you want? <laughs> and you did it, didn't you? Well, God did. Yeah. I took it down. There was three back then three stations two six and eight mm -hmm. took it to two and i got blessed out we've told everything we don't we don't want anything to do with that program went to channel six they cussed me out everybody's been down here we've told them we don't own anything uh -huh. to do with that healing hand went out to channel eight and i got as far as the doorbell who are you lonnie rex or roberts television program we've told them all <laughs> bye and the speaker was cut off <laughs> i failed I went back to my apartment, and I was questioning God. I th God, I thought you told me to come here. Have I lost my connection? And, and uh, I decided to quit. I was too embarrassed to go back in the office. So I decided to go in the next morning. I said, God, I'm going to quit in the morning, so tell me where I'm going in the morning. I talked to God. Mm -hmm. He talked to me. Mm -hmm. And I picked up the paper. And it said, Rolls Royce classic car meet. Oh, I'm crazy about old cars. Mm -hmm. So I jump up and I go down to meet. I didn't know that the largest collection of Rolls Royce classic cars was near Tulsa. And so a lot of guys had them. Mm -hmm. And they had the meet and they gave out the ribbons and everybody left. And this guy came up to me. He said, 
He knew I didn't have a Rolls Royce. So he said, you must be new. Who are you? What do you do? I said, I'm Lonnie Rex. I'm with the Oral Roberts television program. He said, oh. He didn't put out his hand. He didn't say, I'm glad to meet you. And finally, it kind of irritated me. And I looked up and I said, well, who are you and what do you do? He said, my name is Jimmy Lake. I own Channel 8. How can I help you? <laughs> and the rest is history, right? And the rest is history. Uh, you were commissioned by the White House to take milk into Poland. Yes. Um, and this is where... During the old uh, hard, hard times. Was this when President Reagan was in office? When Reagan was in office. Okay, and this is where, you know, that banner of humanitarian, uh, with way too many incidents than we can discuss on this program, but what was your connection there? I mean, how did Reagan or his administration know that you could his get it His religious there? advisor, father, uh, was a friend of my father. Mm -hmm. So anytime they wanted anything to be done religiously or a, a, uh, NHO, they would call me, which I was very pleased. Mm -hmm. So I worked very closely with, with Reagan and, and the Bush and, and that from the White House. They gave me a call and said, we've got a ship we want to send. If you'll go and distribute it. Right. And so Because I, that's where the fraud comes that's in. That's right? where all yeah. the fraud comes yeah. in. Then, and I said, well, I want to prove I distribute it. They want it to go to churches, schools, and daycare. Mm -hmm. So I uh, had a preacher friend in Oklahoma City that you know on television. I said, I want to borrow your cameraman with your big camera. <laughs> go with me so that I can film where prove I'm distributing. Yeah. We landed in Warsaw, Poland. I think it was sometimes 10, 12, 20 degrees below zero. In fact, when we got in our hotel room, we sat on the radiator to warm it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's cold. That's cold. But you know, uh, one thing that bugs me about our foreign aid is Nobody's there with a camera that's to see how it's it. distributed. That's, that's exactly what we need an hour with you, but we don't have it. So let's move along. How many uh, how many popes have you met? Just John Paul? Well, John Paul. Uh, I worked with John Paul in Poland as a cardinal. Then three, You were a cardinal? No, he was a cardinal. Oh, okay, okay. When he was a cardinal, that's when I was in Poland. Three months later, he was pope. Three months later, Betty and I were with him in Rome at the castle. Not, not in Rome, but at the castle. We spent two days with him out there. Really? Tell me about him. He had a spirit that I was drawn to. Everyone was drawn to it. Mm -hmm. he, he, had a, he had another part of it. His secretary was a black man from Zaire. And I couldn't figure out why he was being so kind to us. And finally he said, oh, Brother Rex, thank you, thank you, thank you. My uncle lives in the leper colony you sponsor. And you had had a ministry in a We leper had five leper colonies. That's another, that's oh, another that, yeah. program. That's, yeah, that, yeah. That, is, that is understandable. Yes. But he had this heart for the poor, and, and you were ministering to them, and that was a common bond. Not only that, he wrote my name, not the, the organization name. He wrote Lonnie R. Rex to all Vatican embassies around the world, give all courtesies to Lonnie Rex. For 30 years from that, I imported everything for every disaster through the Pope. Never paid a dime uh, fee. You're or giving me goosebumps. Or had the trucks because the Pope signed that. Because of what we did for his people. Are you shocked when you look back over your own life? Yeah, and you know. You lived it one day at a time, but still when you see the big picture. Every once in a while picture, I tell one of these stories to myself. Uh-huh, it's a good thing. Because if God was with me then and opened that door, he's with me today. Absolutely. And it gives me courage. And, and you, you've known or rubbed shoulders with all these people I've mentioned and uh, you also helped Mother Teresa. Yes, before the world ever knew her. 
And in fact, uh, the home of the dying, which she had there, uh, she didn't have any almost anything to pick up the people. They'd have to drag them or four or five. They were people. dead or almost They're dead. Dumb and yeah. dead on the streets. It's home of the dying. And God put it on my heart to get her an ambulance, a left-hand drive ambulance. And I found one somewhere in the world. And I had the privilege of giving Mother Teresa an amulet. This is before America ever discovered mm -hmm. her. And the last time Betty and I were with her in, in Calcutta, that old amulet, which is at least 20, 25 <laughs> years old, was still out in is the it yard. it running? It, well, it was put we together <laughs> with baling wire, but it, it was still being used. Okay, he's had a relationship with Gorbachev, and we're almost out of time, but I just got to talk about uh, right. Putin. Yeah, Putin. Uh, Putin was not a bodyguard. He was no, he was KGB. Yeah, he was watching you. Right. Uh, we there was ten of us, uh, nine veterans organizations that asked to go and talk to the head generals about our Vietnam MIAs. If they would bring an NGO, and I put together two hundred thousand dollars worth of antibiotics and personally distributed them in the hospitals in Moscow. Oh, you're leaving me breathless. I, I still like to have Putin watching. Did he have a gun? I'm well, sure. he was with us 10 days. And uh, the, there was three of them. And they were with us all the time. We watching them, every move. The three of us, they, the three of us were with them all the time. They they went to the bathroom with us. One of them slept in our room with us. <laughs> they never were out of our sight. Oh man, what a life! Somebody would make a movie out of this, but no one would believe it. No. You know, really. Uh, I don't have time, but you've uh, gone into uh, North Korea three times. North Korea, yeah, by personal invitation. First time I, uh, and the reason was. When I, I did a, a telethon with Gorbachev raising money for their Afghan veterans' children, and the ambassador from North Korea saw the program and recommended me to North Korea. I'm in bed at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I get a call, can you come to North Korea? Yeah, when? Today. Yeah. I left for North Korea. Oh. oh, you gotta get the book. That's all I can say. We are completely out of time, but please, friend, join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.